All right, this is Rob Caudell back again for another episode, working through the series in Jude. And today we're talking about the consequences of apostasy. We're going to be focusing primarily on the um, uh, verses 5 through 7. And so Jude in these verses provides three examples of apostasy from the Old Testament to warn believers of the severe consequences of turning away from God. Now, I I don't remember the last time I've seen one of these, but um, maybe you guys have, maybe you've seen Lighthouses recently. Um, a, A Lighthouse generally will stand for a long time and its purpose is to go- to guide ships safely to shore. Um, but let's say there's a there's a um, a keeper of the lighthouse who has neglected his duty. The light ends up going out and the ship because he can't see the rocky shore ends up crashing and and then the, the loss is catastrophic. It's tragic. Um, and, and it's all due because of one person's failure to remain vigilant. The keeper neglected his responsibility, and because of that, there were devastating consequences. And so Jude is warning his readers of the dangers of apostasy. And that's when, what that means, when you hear that word apostasy, that is basically a turning away from God's truth. He points to three historical examples where neglect, rebellion, and immorality led to destruction. These examples uh, serve as a very serious reminder that turning away from God leads to severe judgment. These warnings are not just historical lessons, but these are things that apply to us today. These are urgent calls for us to remain faithful today. Let's go ahead and read verses 5 through 7. It says, Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Let's pray. Lord, as we look at these very serious verses, help us to understand the seriousness of apostasy. Lord, I pray your spirit would guide us to remain faithful and vigilant, that we would guard our hearts and our minds from turning away from your truth. And we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Jude reminds us of three well-known acts of apostasy in the Old Testament. Um, Each one shows a different aspect of turning away from God and the consequences that follow those actions. And so let's talk about these. The first thing we see is in verse 5. We have the apostasy of Israel. Jude's reminding his readers of the Israelites that were saved from Egypt. They were saved out of that captivity. Remember Moses and the children of Israel? Um, Moses said, let my people go. All the plagues came, and then Egypt uh, suffered greatly, and God basically, through Moses, leads Israel out of Egypt. Um, But What ends up happening is the people that were a part of that group of Israelites, there were a number of them that were unbelieving, and they were destroyed because of their unbelief. Though they witnessed, and this is crazy, they got, you know, we're reading about it, but they got to see these things firsthand. They witnessed God's miracles um, with their very sight. They still doubted his power and his promises. And as a result, that led to their downfall that their downfall in the wilderness. And I think that's a stark reminder for us. Like, um, there's all sorts of neat things that can be done in front of our eyes and all that. But if we're not focusing on the truth of God's word, it's like, it don't matter what miracles we see. There's plenty of things that we can see today that are just phenomenal and amazing. But if it doesn't line up with scripture, it's ultimately going to lead us to destruction, not salvation. So, um, Think about it like this, a person who survives a shipwreck and is rescued, but then they later refuse to follow the rescue team's instructions. What ends up happening? They wander off, they end up dying because they refuse to trust those who saved them, who was saving them. The Israelites did this. They, God gave them guidance. God gave them clarity. God gave them a, a direction to follow. Instead, they turned away from him, even though 
following him would have brought salvation. They chose destruction instead. That, that situation with the Israelites is a powerful warning that it's not enough to begin well. And a lot of us do start well when it comes to like um, our, our goals in ministry, our goals in our education for serving the Lord and all that. Um, but if, if we do not finish well, and think about it like this, the, this unbelief led to their destruction, showing that God's deliverance um, is not a guarantee against future judgment if one turns away from him. And that's the thing. It's like, if you don't truly know the Lord is your Savior, you are that, that person that Jude is talking about. You will be swayed and you will be pulled away. You will be pulled away from the false doctrine. Now, I believe when Jude is talking about these things, he's not necessarily saying that a person can lose their salvation. But what we see here is people who do not trust in God, or let, let's say they're sitting on the fence. Maybe they're hanging out with the church, um, but they're not in the church. They're not saved. If they're hearing something that is false in the name of truth and they believe it, they're being pulled away and that leads to their destruction. However, now, now let's talk about the believer because there, there is something to be said about the believer here. And Jude will allude, uh, we'll talk about that more in depth uh, later on. But believers can be swayed by false teaching. Now they won't necessarily lose, they, they won't lose their salvation. You'll never hear me say that. I believe we are eternally secure. I believe in the perseverance of the saints. And I believe there's a scriptural argument for that. Um, it, it Romans talks about how nothing, not even ourselves, we, we cannot be plucked from God's hand. But what happens is, is we can be led astray and we can face the consequences of our actions of turning away from the truth um, or not acknowledging the truth, not standing up to the truth. Because you'll see Jude saying, hey, it's, not j it's one thing to know it, but you need to also stand for it. You need to contend for it. If you're not contending for it, this is what's going to happen as a result of that. And so um, we have this call, as I just mentioned, the perseverance in the faith that Paul emphasizes in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12. He says, therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. We need to guard our hearts against unbelief and the temptation to doubt God's promises. Our faith, it's not just something that we know, but it's something we live out. We manifest it. God, what God is working in us must be worked out. That's what it means when Paul says, work out your own faith, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What we are to do is work out what he is working within us. And if we don't do that, we're going to be a force for evil rather than for good because we're not standing and making a difference on God's behalf. And so our faith must be active. We must be continually trusting in God's power and provision, even when it's challenging, even when we're facing daunting situations. It's not just about, we're not talking about, as I said, just being saved, but continuing to live out our faith, continuing to be obedient. Um, and so Jude tells us this apostasy, you know, we're talking about human apostasy. This didn't just affect human, humans, but even the spiritual realm, the angels, the angels did not stay within their proper domain, but they abandoned their positions. These angels who were enjoying the bliss of heaven as servants of Almighty God, these angels in God's presence rebel, and now they're, some of them are obviously still at work as forces in the world. You know, we know Satan is obviously at work in the world as the prince of the power of the air, but there's you know, angels that did apparently things so heinous in, in, in their rebellion against God, they are now in chains awaiting eternal judgment. Um, and that was because of their, their rebellion. Now, I think a good way to illustrate this is maybe there's a high-ranking official who betrays his country. He abandons his duties in order to get personal gain. Well, despite that former position of honor, because he betrayed the betrayed his country, betrayed the leadership, betrayed um, what he was to up, what he was a traitor to what he was supposed to uphold. Um, he is now um, in, imprisoned and disgraced. The fallen angels once held positions of glory, but now they face eternal judgment because of their rebellion. 
The fate of these angels demonstrates that no one, not even beings of great power and position, is exempt from God's judgment if they are in rebellion against him. Their example serves as a reminder that, that you're not protected if, if, if you're just, your, your position does not protect you if you are not true to your faith, if you're not born again. And obviously the angels, salvation is, wasn't even an option to them. Salvation is only extended to mankind, to humanity. But the angels, um, they stepped out of, outside of God's will, whether it was through pride or rebellion or the pursuit of their own desires, they ended up, um, they ended up facing God's judgment. And what we see here actually aligns with Peter's warning in sec in Second Peter two verse four. Um, I'm going to turn there real quick. Second Peter uh, two verse four. It says, "For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains." of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. Wow, what a scary reality that is for the angels. And if you don't know Jesus, that's your fate as well. So we need to recognize the seriousness of remaining within the boundaries God has set for us, just as angels were judged for abandoning their God-given roles. If we don't contend for the faith, that's the fate of those that are getting let, that are getting swept away, that are getting um, pulled away from the truth of God's word. And so, um, whether through pride, rebellion, or the pursuit of our own desires, our safety lies in obedience and submission to God's authority. And, and if we're not doing that, that's going to affect others, whether or not they come to Christ. And so we need to keep that in mind. Um, the next thing we see in verse 7, Jude cites Sodom and Gomorrah as examples of those who indulge in gross immorality, homosexuality, rape, all these things, horrible, horrible, unnatural desires, this resulted in their destruction by, 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 by fire physically and fire eternally. These cities are frequently mentioned in Scripture as examples of God's righteous judgment. Um, and, and what they were, they were a city. They were cities that completely disregarded uh, the, the law where every form of immorality is celebrated without restraint. That city eventually faced chaos and destruction, and, and, and that, was, that was the ultimate consequence of their actions. Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, their fate was sealed by their persistent rejection of God's moral standards. And it's amazing because while Lot remained in the city when Abraham knew he was there, God even said he would, he would not destroy until the righteous were, were taken out, and Lot was considered righteous even though there was obviously... He wasn't righteous because of his own actions. He was righteous because of God, his faith in God, the same faith that Abraham has, the same faith that we have. It's not our righteousness, what we have done that saves us, but it's according to God's mercy and what Christ has done for us. Lot was, was a believer who was in rebellion, but in God's grace, God delivers Lot out of that destruction, and um, the, city, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed ultimately. And that illustrates the certainty of God's judgment on those who reject his word. Their punishment serves as a vivid warning of the eternal consequences of living in defiance of God. And I believe this is consistent with Paul's teaching in Romans 127, where he speaks of the consequences of abandoning God's design. Let's read that real quick. We don't want to miss out on a verse from Romans, especially as it's so relevant to what we're going through today in our world let me turn there real quick. Romans chapter 1 verse 27 says, And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty um, for their error. So this is what happens. So they're in rebellion against God. They're, they're, they're uh, denying the created order that God has established for human relationships. Um, there's, there's sexual activity outside of marriage, and even worse, it's not uh, uh, heterosexual immorality, while there is that there is that, that, that nature of sin, but this is talking about homosexual activity. And you see this all over the place today. It is in our face around every corner. Um, two months ago was Pride Month, the month of June, rainbow flags everywhere. They've hijacked 
the rainbow and they're basically saying that um, this is this is uh, love is love, do whatever you want, totally in opposition to what the scripture says. And and people have crept in and said, oh, this is okay. Love If you love your neighbor, you're going to love um, homosexuality. You're going to accept. And the fact of the matter is, is Jesus, he might have accepted people for who they are, but he did not leave them as they were. We get accepted as sinners, but when he saves us by his grace, he's changing us. That old self is to be put off and the new is to be put on. And that is where I think this movement is falling short is like they don't recognize or they're intentionally ignoring the fact that once we get saved, we are to be in pursuit of being conformed into the image of Christ, not staying where we are. And and then even becoming more and more um, militant about it as well. So um, we see that in what Romans one twenty seven. um, that Paul is talking about the consequences of abandoning abandoning God's design for human relationships. We live in a culture, as I said, that increasingly mirrors the moral decay of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so as believers, we need to resist the pressure to conform to such immorality. We are called to uphold God's standards in our lives, knowing that God's judgment is real and it's inevitable for those who reject his ways. If we're not standing for the truth, we are not being a force that is directing people to the Lord, but we are actually freely letting them flow towards destruction. And so Jude's message is clear. Apostasy leads to destruction. We saw that in the example of Israel, the fallen angels, and Sodom and Gomorrah. Those are reminders of the severe consequences of turning away from God. And so as believers, we need to take these warnings to heart. We need to remain vigilant faithful and obedient and guard against any form of apostasy in our in our lives because if we're not being faithful to the truth of God's worth and holding fast to the faith that is going to lead people to their destruction because we are not being faithful messengers of the word of God and so that is so important and if you're listening to the sound of my voice today don't be swayed by what the world is teaching. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, if you haven't turned to Christ, I urge you today to consider the seriousness of these warnings. This was written to you. God's judgment is real, but so is his offer of salvation through Jesus Christ. You need to repent and believe in him today and receive the gift of eternal life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the warnings you have given us in your word. Help us to heed them, to remain faithful to you, to live lives that reflect your holiness. We pray for those who do not yet know you, that they would turn from their ways and come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And we ask you these things in his precious name. Amen.